Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video. In this video, we're actually going to start talking about a little bit about security things. So we've set up a lot of servers, but we didn't really wrap any, you know, security related things um, behind any of the servers. So um, if we want to know, hey, did we leave anything open, vulnerable, or other things, uh, we honestly don't know. So in this video, um, we're going to talk about um, using uh, Waza. And if I said that completely wrong, I'm so sorry. But it's actually something that I found back in my day when I was doing cyber defense competitions in colleges um, to kind of help strengthen and harden my my uh, images. Um, and it was a great thing. And honestly, the install is like so much easier now. It was like way more painful back because it was still an open source kind of version of, um, hey, you got to install all these things to make it work. But now it's kind of like a packed, packaged install and it's pretty great. Um, it actually uses OSEC as our as as its backend of um, host paste intrusion detection system. So there's a lot of fun kind of things that you can do with it. Um, but we're just gonna probably just install it, show you a few things, and then you can just play around with it and see what you can find with it. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy the video, love the content, uh, wanna send me some swag or some hardware, um, my email's in the description below. So awesome, let's get started guys. Okay, so first off, um, we need to go to the site that is essentially it is. It's actually um, a SEM solution, S-I-E-M. I I can not even remember what that stands for now. It's like security intrusion, something monitoring, enterprise monitoring, something like that. Um, but it is actually really cool. And actually I haven't installed it since like the latest update because this, they have, they have done a really good job um, making this even better than it was before because before it was like hey there's like this Elasticsearch thing that was like really old and um, you, you essentially just got like the base Kibana set up but now they have like way better dashboards things like that to make it easier um, so we're actually going to go through the install process so um, with the install you essentially have um, the server and the uh, agent um, uh, there's, there's a lot of components in, with the server but essentially well, it's a one quick install, so we'll go to the quick start um, and actually go to installation guide. Um, so let's see, installing the agent, oh, the server. Wait, do I have to have to do separate installs? That's, that's the question now. Before it was one install. Oh, this might be interesting. I might have to do multiple installs to get the indexer and dashboard. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, they actually have like Docker deployment and actually a few other things. That's kind of interesting. We could do the Docker deployment. Install with Splunk. Oh, it has Splunk integrations. Deploy with Ansible. All right, all right. Um, give me one second. Okay, so there's a few things that we can do. Um, let's go back to the quick start here real quick. Okay. I think it's just it's still a one like one thing install. So let's 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 do this and see what it goes, honestly. I, I don't I don't know. It's been a while since I've actually done a fresh install with this. So um, 141. Alright. Oh, no, that's just the URL. Let's copy this. All right, let's see what this brings us. The recommended systems are, yes, yes, yes. What, what's the problem here? <laughs> does not meet the system. Oh, it's because I'm using Oracle Linux, which is actually pretty close to a Red Hat distribution. Um, so we'll just use the I to skip this check. It should still, it should, it should still work, so I'm not too worried. All right, while we wait for that install, let's actually update our DNS here real quick too. Boop, boop. Update the serial number. 
Waza. All right, so it looks like it's going to install through the dependencies, uh, install a few other things. Um, the agent install, so we installed this. It'll give us this with the admin password. Next steps would be the agent install. So we're just going to start on, on one of our boxes. We're probably going to just install on our code server, which is our Visual Studio Code server. Um, if you if you want to know more about it, it's actually um, in my just just my video right before this code server um, so we're gonna just install it on this and it'll be great so okay so okay so it does install the indexer okay so this is the, this is still a one like one command install thing it'll, it'll install everything but you could create like actual separate servers for like an indexer your your manager and and whatever the dashboard thingy um, but for for simple sake, one line command install. <laughs> okay, so let's open our code server two. We can't do the install just yet, but we can log in. But the install is actually pretty pretty simple because you'll just essentially grab it from the YAML repository. So we, we can actually do this part first. So let's do this part. So we import the key, um, which means hey, we 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 trust this new repository. We will um, import the repository, which it just creates a file that says hey, this is another repository that you can look at. And then there will be this agent install. So obviously, they have ten zero zero two as their manager IP, but our case is going to be 192.168.1.141. So we'll, we'll definitely update that beforehand. And then we can make sure that it loads the agent. And then we th then the recommended is to disable a uh, Wazoo. So like if you did like a yum update, um, it wouldn't update the agent um, during that update. Um, this is good for when you have when you're writing like in a production system. You don't want it to just automatically update packages and then it might break because you didn't update your server yet, right? Um, it's more of a like server agent config. When you're ready to update your server, then you update it, then you update the agents, and then and then it all kind of works out here. All right, so we got through the index install, start the indexes. Now we're going through the server install, um, which is great actually. Like I I remember back in the day. This install was literally like copy and pasting commands. There were probably like about 50 commands that you had to copy and paste because it would install every single package that it needed it would, for the indexer. It would install everything that needs for, for the managers, like even like file beat and everything. And then Elasticsearch and then Kibana. Like it was, it was a lot more work than what it is now. Um, and, and it got worse because like they would come up with like newer versions. Um, and then you you would end up installing like a newer version than than what the documentation was suggesting at that point in time, and it wouldn't always work. So like you had to like do the install and then hope like everything that it installed was like compatible with each other. Um, but in this case, it looks like it's gonna be just just the same. So I'm not I'm not too worried here. But it was really funny. Uh, it. Probably took me a few nights to get this to work when it was literally like commands and commands. This documentation is just is so much better now, um, and and honestly, I I've I've used this actually pretty intensively. At least the older version. I haven't used this version yet. Um, I've used um, the the three version, but I haven't I haven't used the four version yet. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you know like this dashboard looks actually pretty fancy. Um, you can also they also do like vulnerability scans. Um, they give CIS benchmarks. So uh, CIS benchmarks, if you don't know, um, benchmarks. It's kind of it's kind of essentially, hey, um, these are what our recommended suggestions for settings that you should have on your machine that are based off of a good security practice, right? Um, the problem with some CIS benchmarks is it gets to a point where some of it is just so locked down that you're like, 
Well, this doesn't make sense in our use case, but that's 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 why this is more of a best practice type situation. In in theory, in like a you know world that you can completely secure, this is how you would secure it. But obviously, you can't like just lock everyone out, right? Like, <laughs> but th there are some good practices that you would never actually see. Um, and like, there's uh, CIS. Um, benchmarks for like every single operating system and things like that. So it's actually a lot. It's 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 something that if you want to fall asleep, this is this is the thing to read. You would you start reading it and then you go, I'm kind of bored and then kind of fall asleep. Um, unless you enjoy reading security related benchmarks, but that's that's you. I I, I would I would fall asleep. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've had this installed, so we'll go to our interface. Um, so uh, there is also the admin username and password. So what we're going to actually do is actually go to our Vault Warden and enter this so that we don't lose it. And for some odd reason, when I log in, uh, maybe this is a bug, yeah. When I log in, it doesn't show up, but when I reload, it does. So let's add this in. So admin, let's get the password here real quick. And password. And save that. So now we can go to waza dragon.local. Oh, and, and it's using its own self-signed set that I created, not our set, so that's this is why this shows up, but we can we can update that later. Um, I'm not too worried about updating in this video because I don't actually know where it is and usually it's in like a weird place to actually update so I'm not going to take the trouble going through that but maybe a different video. So now you've logged in it's going to go through do all its checks um oh dear god where's where oh tenants they actually made it so you can do have tenants that's kind of interesting I didn't even realize that um but the real question is do they have a dark mode? Please tell me they have a dark mode. I can't handle this. It's too bright. Settings. I don't know if they have a dark mode. Oh God. Okay. Well, when I when I when I gonna go and uh, try to try to find it, but I thought I, I if I could just find it real quick, it'd be great. But we're not, we're not, we're not going to rush it. Um, but dark mode. Can, 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 if, 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 if any of you guys are developers for this, can, can we just default the, the base, base background to be just dark mode? We'd we'll love it. Okay. So now that we've in installed the server and it's running, we want to install the agent on, on all, all of our boxes in this case, but we're only going to just install it on one. Um, so um here we go so we've already added the repository now we need to do the agent install so actually i'm going to just type this out because i need to actually update it so we will set the variable for the manager to be our manager server and install the wazoo agent so when, when this finishes installing it should actually show up in our agents. So I think under agents, it will show up here. So currently, currently there isn't anything. So that's why it's, it's like this. It's telling you essentially, Hey, go deploy an agent. There's no agent. <laughs> okay. And then we need to start it. So this is a CTL Damien reload enable. And start. And then this this set is just essentially just setting enabled from one to zero. So like you could actually just go to the repo and actually do it too and edit the repo. It's essentially just doing this. Um, but set commands are nice because it's a one line command. You don't have to really think about it, but that's essentially what it's doing. Okay, so now we have that loaded. So with that, 
which we are refresh, and now you see code server dot local is imported. So that's it's it's super easy. You essentially just tell it, hey, this is the the IP of the server, and it works. Like it's it's just, it's just magic. Um, you can click on the agent. It will show you a lot of things. So there's compliances. You can already see the CIS benchmark um, where it actually failed like 71 out and and 114 pass. So I mean for for default, I mean I would say that's that's pretty good. Um, so like in this case, it failed that ensured temp is configured. Um, this is like specific. I believe this is. Um, Changing temp to be like different um, options and stuff like that, um, and you know, does does it make or break things? Not necessarily at the end of the day, but it's it's something to be aware of um, because it's not it's you it, the machine's not following a best practice. So you, you get all these you know other things that you can you can see um, events. Um, oh, so like one of the cool things about this also is. This will actually show you, and I'm I'm hoping that it actually does some some cool things. Is the security events, and you can trigger security events off of this. So, like, say for example, like you know, you have someone log in and it failed logging in. Like, you can get authentication failures, authentication successes. So, like, we can go in here, and we can go like this, and and fail the password multiple times and it actually will count as authentication failures. Um, it, it might take a little bit because it's like right now installing all the things, but this is kind of good when you're like having a public server, you want to see, hey, you're like who's all hitting my machine and what's happening. So like you see, hey, there's three authentication failures. That was actually really quick. Um, so you can see how um, there's the alert, security alert. You can see that the failed login um, and lateral movement is because I just, I, I just retried. So you can see, um, the agent IP and like the source IP. So I'm hitting from my computer um, on here and I was trying to log in as root. So there's a lot of things in here that can show you actually like attempts from, from bad authentications or if you have a public server, it's actually kind of fun just watching like from a geo map where all these IPs are coming from um, because there's just a ton of bots all over the world that just hit public IPs to see if they can do things. Um, so that's just like, you know, a very small brief overview of what there can be. There's a lot more, there's integrity, in in integrity monitoring. Wow, I can barely say that. So like they actually do have like file integrity monitoring um, and, and other things. So um, this is going to be it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you want more in depth, like, hey, what, what does this all offer? But the security events, monitoring, SEA, system auditing, vulnerabilities, attacks, um, all these other things, it's like, there's a lot to digest and just kind of just fun to play around with. So if you do enjoy secu te technical security, I would highly recommend downloading and installing this in your home lab just to play around with because it, it's open source. You really, I mean, they've, they've improved the software so much by leaps and bounds since I've used it. Like when I first found this like seven, seven years ago. So, all right. Well, if you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.